the tyrannical former city manager of Leon Valley, Texas, I'll call her Kelly K today, continues her personal profit agenda by milking the taxpayers for every dollar she can get. The latest get-rich-quick scheme is a ridiculous claim that she, the chief administrative officer, the top dog, was discriminated against in the workplace. Kelly's friends and professional associates on staff at Leon Valley kept the contents of the discrimination complaint hidden while Kelly's local mouthpieces smeared the sitting council members. And I can understand why residents might be concerned. Charges of retaliation, harassment, and discrimination are serious. It would be completely reasonable to wonder if the city did something very bad. But once you see the complaint, you quickly realize there's nothing to it. Just another ploy to make money and allow contracted attorneys to bill for more time. Kelly claimed that she had to quit because counsel harassed her and called her names. But her story is not that of poor Rudolph the ridiculed red nose reindeer. Instead, the record will show that Kelly inappropriately engaged in politics and lost. There is a group of bureaucrats in Texas who use city governments as their personal cash cows. Kelly Kay is one of the ringleaders of the group. After leaving Leon Valley, she continued to ask for more money. For example, a $500 invoice for personal attorney fees. It was determined that the city had no obligation to pay the bill, but before Assistant City Manager Crystal Caldera could address the matter, City Secretary Sondra Passelweg told her it had already been paid. Kelly received a payout of accumulated leave time throughout the year, and as soon as those payments dried up in September, she filed this EEOC complaint on October 5th. She marked the boxes that she had been discriminated on based on sex and retaliation. She wrote in her complaint, I served as city manager for respondent from September 2015 through December 31st, 2020. In 2018, I received complaints that City Council Member Martinez had been sexually harassing City Council Member Rodriguez, as well as another city employee at the workplace. I went to the city attorney for guidance. However, she informed me that she was filing her own complaint and could not assist me with this case. I then went to the Texas Municipal League and sought out guidance. In December 2018, I initiated an investigation into the allegations against Council Member Martinez. Soon after, at least another five more city employees came forward to make a complaint against Councilmember Martinez. Finally, on or about July 2019, a hearing was held and Councilmember Martinez was voted off the board. So far, I've read over half of her complaint, but she has yet to state any claim or evidence of discrimination against her. She continued, Immediately after, the retaliation got worse. The mayor and council members who did not vote against Mr. Martinez began to harass me and call me names. Who is she talking about? Councilors Donna Charles and Monica Alcacer were the only two to vote in favor of booting Benny. Catherine Rodriguez, Will Bradshaw, and Chris Riley did not vote against Mr. Martinez. Let's see what Kelly claimed they did. While meetings were held, council members would mispronounce my name, calling me or I would receive disturbing emails from a group called First Amendment Auditors, who are associated with some of the council members. With the harassment and retaliation and the mayor's refusal to correct anyone in the meetings, I felt I had no other recourse than to resign. I submitted my resignation early 2020, but when COVID hit, I decided to stay to help stabilize the city. The harassment didn't stop though, so when things stabilized, I submitted my resignation and my last day was December 31st, 2021. I believe I have been retaliated against for engaging in protected activity in violation of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, as amended. Kelly is mostly vague in her claims and fails to precisely state the multiple dates that she resigned. In the rest of the video, I will tear apart her absurd complaint and show what really happened regarding her employment in the long election year of 2020. First, I must point out the obvious. Kelly never made any claim or outcry while working in Leon Valley. It wasn't until after her payout ran out that she complained. In her complaint, she claimed she felt she had no other recourse than to resign. That's a lie. You don't have to look far to figure that out. The first half of her complaint demonstrates that not only was a process for recourse available to her, but also she in her own words admits that the process worked. 
that Mr. Martinez was removed from the council. She knew all of the tricks and games to boot counselors who she did not like. Well, at least until I arrived on scene. Section 7.02a of the Home Rule City Charter states that no person shall be appointed to, or removed from, or in any way favored or discriminated against with respect to any city position or appointed city administrative office because of race, national origin, sex, political, or religious opinions, or affiliations. If one or more officials violate the Home Rule Charter, the Section 312 process can be used to investigate and sanction the alleged violators. Punishment can include further investigation, fine, censure, or the extreme. Removal from office. Kelly never filed a complaint about the alleged discrimination during her employment. But that's not all. On February 19, 2019, the council adopted Kelly's ethics ordinance. I was initially told, or I think we all were initially told, that this uh, uh, was done at the request of uh, a counselor or counselors. And however, it, uh, last, uh, at last meeting, it was indicated that it was done at the request of the city manager, so uh, I'm not sure uh, exactly the case. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm, in, I'm requesting that uh, this be postponed so we can have a uh, workshop to uh, consider some uh, modifications and additions. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Council, if I may uh, clarify what Dr. Edwards was saying. Uh, the initial request was from City Council to City Council people, um, but the additions that I added, uh, the first reading that I showed you uh, on the PowerPoint uh, was requested by the manager to be added in. So. Um, if that's what you heard, that's that's what it was about. It was, the city the city manager didn't request this item per se. Okay, yeah, just that uh, yeah. that's my point. That initially it was city council members, and uh, then it was a request of additional items. Is that, is that no. what you're? The uh, city council members requested the item to be put on the agenda. Uh, city manager uh, requested the additions that I put in the okay. uh, right. in that's the code. Um, that I presented to council last time. I've got a lot of other questions and how, you know, this ethics works versus the Home Rule Charter and there's some other areas that I'm thinking we might ought to discuss and so maybe if we could sit down and go through it because this is, this is, a, um, we've never had this before. This is major. We have a motion by Councillor Alcacer and a second by Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, to approve the uh, ethics ordinance. Three eyes, right? Ms. Rodriguez, Ms. Alcacer, and Mr. Jordan, Councilor Jordan, and two nays. That was former city attorney Denise Frederick being such a loyal employee. Could she stutter any more during her attempt to cover for Kelly? What does Kelly's ethics ordinance say? It too prohibits discrimination, harassment, and retaliation. Any person who believes that there has been a violation of the ethics laws may file a sworn complaint with the city secretary. Kelly could have filed an ethics complaint as well, but she didn't. She failed to take any action to address the alleged discrimination while she was city manager. Yet now she claims she had no recourse. That's ridiculous. She had recourse under the Home Rule City Charter and ethics laws the same charter and ethics laws that she adamantly pushed for. If she honestly considered herself to be a victim of discrimination in the workplace, why did she not file an ethics complaint or file 312 charges against Rodriguez, Bradshaw, or Riley? Kelly complained that she was discriminated against because people mispronounced her name. I've been to and watched days worth of Leon Valley Council meetings, and I've never seen Kelly say anything about how she wants her last name to be pronounced. She's had my email and phone number for years and hasn't said anything to me about it. There was, however, a Blanco meeting where the Blanco mayor got it wrong. We only have um, one thing on the agenda tonight, which is to discuss and possible action on review of proposal from Kelly Conster regarding consultation and evaluation of staff and city structure. Um, Ms. 
Can you say that? Can you say that? Can you say that? I'm happy to. Um, good evening, Mayor Council. Hello, you virtually. Oh boy, Blanco is screwed. Kelly also complained about disturbing emails she received from people around the world. Cry me a river. She could have considered the ramifications of spouting off to the press that the mass arrests were okay because they had insurance for civil rights violations. Does she think that her complaint is going to overturn the First Amendment to the Constitution? It's just another baseless claim to fill space because she doesn't have any legitimate claims. But she did check the boxes for sex and retaliation discrimination, so she must have something, right? Benny was kicked off council in August 2019 and probably replaced by Matthew Hody. Still, four out of the six members of city council were women. Kelly claims the retaliation got worse immediately after Benny was gone. But what did the council actually do immediately after? On October 15, 2019, the council voted to extend Kelly's contract an additional four years and give her a $20,000 salary increase along with many other benefits. It's anything but retaliation. Favoritism would be more like it. Let's take a look at the contract updates. The old contract is on the left side of your screen and the new contract is on the right. The new contract doubled the standard term length of two years to four years. That locked in future council to keep her as city manager unless they wanted to pay out a huge buyout. Her salary increased from $139,000 to $160,000, using a bogus so-called salary study as political cover for the huge raise. Her yearly salary increase percentage was modified from a 10% cap to a 15% cap which would have been a $24,000 increase in the first year. That's a lot of money. Her salary would have quickly reached over $200,000. The new contract included an automatic 10% raise unless council determined otherwise. The change in paragraph 9 is a huge one. The old contract said, As with other city employees, employee will not be paid for any unused major medical leave or will not be allowed to convert said leave to personal leave. But under the 2019 contract, it's now the very generous provision that employee will be paid for any unused personal leave and major medical leave upon termination of employment by either party to this agreement. That added thousands of dollars to her payout. Far from discrimination, instead of being treated like every other employee, she gained additional favors. More on the leave hours later in the video. The contribution to her retirement account increased from $15,000 to $25,000. Under the new contract, it would be a lump sum payment made in October instead of being spread out over the year. The buyout provision is one of the most favorable changes for Kelly yet. I guess it's a punishment for any taxpayers who decide to vote against Kelly's political establishment. The payout more than doubled. The old buyout included three months base salary and personal leave days. The new buyout included six months base salary and one month base salary per every year employed, personal leave and major medical leave. It was a very favorable contract for Kelly. If that was retaliation, what exactly would it take to please her? At council meetings, Mayor Riley was much harder on change Leon Valley project members than she was on others. Kelly's supporters, on the other hand, could get away with almost anything. More citizens are becoming upset. You're not following the charter that you wrote. Your own words, you're not following it. No interim, uh, you're just a disgrace now. Thank you for making the city of Leon Valley let's, an unhappy let's, place. Let, yeah, let's not keep, let's not attack. Let's keep it positive and civil. Leon Valley is a great city. We have great citizens, and we are going to get a great city manager. And you couldn't leave soon enough, Kelly. It's you okay. that Ms. has caused Ms. Ms. Bacon, Ms. Bacon. Point. Mary, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. She, Please. I know everybody's a little, you know, on edge, but let's not do any personal attacks. Let's try to remain respectful and calm because we all need to leave in the. Um, boyer if you can't.
All right. Yes. Uh, Mary, Councilor? I, I'd like to respond uh, a bit because there's still more information that's misinformation being portrayed. There's many, many things that you're not aware of. The, the city, yes, uh, the citizens uh, vote for us as council people, and we have the good and bad duty of having to do things that are tough. We're in that position now. The citizens didn't have input when Miss Keensler was hired. Uh, that's our role, and that's something that we take very seriously. For the 18 months, uh, Mr. Mata keeps talking all the while I'm talking and laughing. Will you please, Mayor, point of order? Uh, Mr. Mata, would you just, for the for peace sake, would you just uh, go to the foyer and then we don't I, have... I, I haven't heard you, but uh, this is a point of order. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, if, yeah, just, just, let's just, I understand. I understand. Mayor, point of order. Yes. You're asking him to sit in the foyer, not to leave yeah, the meeting. Yeah, just right? sit in the foyer. Yeah, that's all I ask you to well, please do. Oh, thank you for that. Clarify. I appreciate that. But, you know, again, I'm just trying to see if we can get through this meeting. Thank you. No, he's not having to leave. Just, okay. Now, I don't think you'll be distracted. Uh, the, the position, in spite of what's portrayed, is not something that uh, the quality city managers around Texas are even interested in because of the publicity happening for the past nearly a year. Leslie Bacon, Forest Oaks Canterfield. I don't understand why other people are being um, censored here in what they're speaking, but there are certain people that supports council members here that are allowed to say and call people names and disrespect council members and the mayor are duly elected representatives here. The city manager should stand up and make sure that all people are treated, created equal, treated equal here in this meeting. We are citizens and we deserve that. Shame on you. Shame on you, Ms. Kinsler. It's not Put people down, please. As you saw, Mayor Riley often stifled her own supporters, going so far that they eventually called her out. But if we are to believe Kelly's versions of events, she said, with the harassment and retaliation and the mayor's refusal to correct anyone in the meetings, I felt I had no other recourse than to resign. The timeline shows that her resignation was actually driven by people stepping up to take back their city. On November 18, 2019, Change Leon Valley filed recall petitions to unseat Monica Alcoser and Donna Charles, two of Kelly's most loyal supporters on the council. The petitions were certified on January 7, 2020. The council initially refused to schedule the recall election, but then Josh Stevens filed a lawsuit on January 23rd to force the city to hold the election. Kelly submitted her first resignation letter on January 28, 2020. She said her last day would be May 1st, the day before the election. Her buddy Joe Savaggio was working to take out Josh Stevens and change Leon Valley before then, and she could rescind her resignation if it looked like her political team would win. Um, I am resigning as the Leon Valley City Manager, effective May 1st, 2020. In her resignation letter, she said, I have had many opportunities that I have turned down in an effort to assist in fixing the broken issues in Leon Valley given to me by the City Council in 2015. I have decided to finally explore the opportunities. She continued, In spite of the slander and fabrication regarding the City staff allowed recently in City Council meetings by a very few, my professional opinion is that the staff is doing a fantastic job. She can't handle even the slightest bit of criticism. Nevertheless, at the following city council meeting on February 4th, she made it clear that she was not leaving because of any problem or dispute, but rather to pursue other career opportunities. I hope this departure is not in regards directly to uh, the most recent 
activities uh, within the community because um, that would be just a, a, a shame. Thank you. Okay. To ask or answer this young gentleman's question back here as absolutely not the reason I'm leaving. I actually have had several opportunities that I've actually passed on um, in an effort to try to hang in here and make sure that certain things got accomplished. Um, and I feel like as far as a city manager, I've done that and um, I'm ready to go on to new things. And I've had some some great opportunities come my way and now I just need to figure out which way, what direction I'm gonna head. Even though Kelly was staying for several more months, she surprised Mayor Riley by recommending that Police Chief Joe Savaggio immediately become interim city manager. Leon Valley would have two city managers at the same time. Kelly explained that Savaggio was the best choice for countering the political opposition. She went so far as to claim that staff was being physically attacked. Presentation 2.2, presentation, discussion, and possible action on the appointment of an interim city manager and approving a contract with the interim city manager. Thank you. There's nothing um, in our packet. An administrator should be able to carry out policies handed down to them without interference. Tenant four of my code of conduct says that I must serve the best interests of the people. This means all the people. And that's what I've tried to do. They are physical. There are physical and mental attacks on citizens and staff um, that staff I have been, I have received, I can't tell you how many memos and phone calls from staff who are so upset about the physical and the mental attacks on them. This is another reason I believe Chief Salvaggio is the individual that is, hap that is capable of, cre of handling the chaos that's being uh, created by these attacks right now. John Gray traveled to Leon Valley to live stream this meeting at my request, but he was arrested by Leon Valley police prior to the meeting. Savaggio wanted to make sure that John was held in custody until after the meeting. He wanted his big promotion day to go his way. I'm one of the 11,000 plus citizens that will be paying this bill. I'm one of the 850 plus people who signed the re recall petition. I'm concerned of why we're having two city managers at the same time. This lady, Ms. Kinsler, is not leaving until March, May 1st. And now you want to hire somebody in, in the interim who's already got a full-time job? Where are we getting the money for all this? The charter doesn't say that we have an interim city manager, like Mr. Bradshaw says. How, we're not going by the charter? How do we operate our business, our city, and not go by the charter? And how do we have this contract already agreed on when the citizens here have not had any input whatsoever? This is not open and transparent government. This is not what we signed up for. I mean, come on, y'all. Now she's out the door and passing the same contract on to the chief of police, which seems like a reward for something. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Alcacer? Yes. Councilor Hody? Yes. And Councilor Bradshaw? No. Uh, motion passes four ayes and one nay. Council postponed action on Kelly's separation agreement. It was scheduled for deliberation at multiple meetings in the future, but no action was taken. Change Leon Valley was gaining steam with the approaching election. It seemed like nothing short of a global crisis would save Kelly's supporters. However, on March 12, 2020, the establishment scored a win in their attack to take out the mayor. The Ethics Commission claimed that Mayor Riley violated the city charter by releasing attorney invoices. Although the Ethics Commission recommended no further action against the mayor, Kelly's team wanted to remove the mayor via the 312 process. And then on March 25th, democracy was canceled. Council called off the May election. Kelly's supporters would have control of the city until at least November, giving Kelly's administration more time to take out the political opposition. I understand the need for public safety at this time, especially, uh, but I do not agree with moving the election to November 3rd, extending people's turns by six months. Um, we have the means to have the election. Whenever we go to the polling sites, there's usually only one or two people voting. 
and we have the means to um, contain this where people can vote and be spaced out and not gather in large crowds. It would just be like going, you know, like now to the grocery store or people are lining up to go through drive through or carry out to get food. Um, I don't, I don't see a need to postpone the election to November. Uh, Ms. Charles, the motion is that we postpone the May 2nd, 2020 election and um, move it due to the health, safety, and welfare of the situation that we're in right now to the November 3rd general election. That was the gist of the okay. motion and the second. So yeah. that's what you're voting on. Then I say yes. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Catherine Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Monica Alcacer? I'm in favor. Okay. Councilor Matthew Hody? Yes. And Councilor William Bradshaw? Yeah. Will Bradshaw. No. Yeah. Okay. The motion uh, carries uh, four ayes and one nay. Okay. Thank you. At the following council meeting on April 7th, Kelly's resignation was extended until September 30th. This is uh, Citizen Leslie Bacon. I had a uh, question for the city manager. Okay. All right. Ms. Kunstler, when you resigned at the city council meeting, you spoke very derogatorily about Leon Valley and the citizens. You went as far to say is that we would not be able to obtain another city manager because our reputation was so bad. So I'm wondering what changed as well as are you going to apologize and what will you do oh, I'm to sorry. heal am the I, harm am I that the you did? Uh, yeah, I'm over again. I'm sorry, I can't hear who, who is speaking I, I next. Mute, I muted them. Um, go ahead, Ms. Bacon. Go Pardon continue. Um, Ms. Bacon, I think somebody was speaking over you, but I don't know who it was. Mayor, I think that sounded like a, a police walkie-talkie or fire department. Oh, walkie -talkie. okay. Walkie-talkie. Okay, I apologize. It's, I asked it's, um, the city manager if she was going to, um, what she was going to do to heal the city that she derided so negatively when she resigned and how she was going to heal the harm that she created when she did that. I'd like to call a point of order. Ms. Bacon? This is on extending her contract till September 30th and not actually, um, I guess, you know, what she said on the, the 4th of September and healing the, the city. That's what the point of order, I believe, is, uh, is referring to. So if you have something more specific on the extending of this contract. I'm just wondering what uh, her reasons are. If she felt so negatively about Leon Valley, why is she, why is she extending it? I'd appreciate it. Did you want to address that? Yes, according to Mr. Thank Urkon, we are not supposed to do that during citizens to be heard. So I don't know if Mr. Zek would like me to answer something that we just discussed in executive session or not. I'll leave that to the attorney. All right, thank you. Mr. Zek? Um, uh, there's no, it's, it's completely up to, um, you, um, what you, what you want to say. I mean, I didn't give any legal advice. So as long as you're not giving legal advice, there's no prohibition on you having, you know, stating something that was stated in closed session. Okay. Yeah. I would just, okay. add, um, ask Ms. Bacon to refer to one of her elected representatives, um, and they can explain the reason that, um, Chief Salvaggio, and I believe this is the best interest of the city for the next few months. Uh, Chief Salvaggio didn't speak negatively about the city. It was only you when you resigned that spoke so negatively about our city. I'm um, actually Ms. Bacon. I didn't. I've never spoken negatively about Leon Valley. I said because of the dysfunctional reputation that this city currently has, um, you're not going to get great applicants. Any applicant that you get that comes in is going to research Leon Valley, and they're going. You, you don't, you're not going to get very good reviews. I would beg this body to work on improving the quality of the image of Leon Valley. So I, I, well, I think, think if you there are a film, lot of. Yeah, you did you want me to stop? That, uh, you were, you did, and people uh, responded to it very. Felt like you did a lot of harm 
uh, in your comments about our city and the citizens when you were resigning. Um, in my view, maybe just to save your reputation as you were leaving. Uh, I would like to take a roll call vote on the motion and the second that is on the um, floor, and that is to extend the city manager's resignation date to September 30th, 2020. And Ms. Charles, how do you vote? Yes. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Alcacer? Yes. Councilor Bradshaw? I'm sorry, Councilor Hody, excuse me. Yes. And Councilor Bradshaw? No. All right, the motion carries four ayes and one nay. During the executive sessions, Councilman Bradshaw discovered that Kelly's leave hours had been substantially inflated. She was set to receive thousands of dollars of overpayment. We didn't have a lot of time to review that. And we went into executive session. If I recall, it was 1130 or 12 o'clock at night um, when we went in there after a long uh, city council meeting and we, you know, came out and we approved it. We didn't have time to vet it. And that's what I'm saying. A word was changed from employee will not be paid any major medical leave to the new contract employee will be paid for any unused major medical leave which is to me unheard of in a contract but that's what was done and now we're we almost consider forty five thousand dollars and and to your point it was discovered that, that not only was you know the contract says she gets 12 days of major medical leave but not only was she getting that she's also getting uh accrued major medical leave for the rest of the employees of an extra, I think it was like 2.7 uh, hours, 3.7 hours per pay period, which is equal to another 12 days per year. So, you know, total 24 days a year of major medical leave that you're right, there was a mistake. Of, so I would like corrected, I think, because it, it, it's an issue. And, um, and, and now we're paying it all out. We didn't have time to vet it there. You know, that was just one issue that I point out, but I believe there's several other issues with the contract that are all one-sided. And I, I just feel that, you know, we make these rust decisions sometimes without vetting it, without um, running it by the taxpayers, and it ends up being a major cost to the taxpayers. Is this what Kelly calls harassment? Someone attempting to hold the city administration accountable? Bradshaw was targeted once again by Kelly for confronting the corruption. But Bradshaw was right about the overcounting of Kelly's leave hours. And just, you know, this person scratches my back, then I scratch their back, and I pay them, and they cover for me. I don't want that. It's very odd to hear how we're not transparent, yet we're receiving transparency awards. Asking for. And I'd like to address one more thing that he's accused us of. Um, and I want to be Me very, as well. I, I want to be very clear here. I don't care who comes and looks at our records. It's completely transparent. For anybody to come up here and mislead the public to say that there's something there is, is atrocious. It's, it's, it's completely wrong. I want to see what's been being paid and what the accruals are is what I'm really interested in. The accruals of major medical leave, because like I said, it's, it's being doubled. And I don't know if it's going on for other employees or not. Okay. Uh, yes. Hi. Ms. So Caldera. Uh, yeah. I just want to respond to one thing because it was my error. Okay. Um, and so when we, when Ms. Kensler first started here and I set her up, we, I set her up in the payroll system, I set her up per contract. Well, we had a payroll clerk in a different department leave the accruals on. So she was getting the contracted amount and the accruals. And so it was brought to our attention and it was fixed. And it was fixed on May 19th, 2020. And I don't know if that was in the documents or not, um, but it, um, it was corrected. Um, out once it was brought to our attention. So that's the only thing I can respond to. May of this year, 2020? Yes, because it okay. was, we, we went, we that's had... That's a question. The, just sit there, let sure. her finish. No, I, I mean, it was, it, it was just an oversight. It was, and you can see the date when she was set up in the system. And I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, she's getting both. She's getting the contract and she's getting the accrual. In my mind, I thought she was supposed to get both. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch it. It was brought to our attention. And I did. I, I was like, we got it. I have to. We have to fix it. So we did correct that issue. So I just and wanted you, to. And you corrected it by withdrawing it. Yes, we just deducted it. Okay, deducting. We just we just yeah. took it off. Mm -hmm. Like so, whatever amount she had that she had to pay back to us, 
-hmm. We went in and did a manual adjustment okay. so the system could actually read the date and time that it was done. Okay. So if I did get an open records request for Hold it. Hold on, there was nothing to pay back. No. It was just a record. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, Ms. Kensler, no. just a minute. You need to be recognized, please. Sorry. No, just, I, yes, I didn't say please. I'll let you talk, but you need to be recognized. I just meant yes. that what we did was whatever the amount was, we deducted the amount that she, sh she shouldn't have gotten off okay. of the my, I mean. So I guess I just wanted to clarify. Did you not get that document that Miss? Um, no, I did not. It may be in the pay. I, it does on the printout. It has specific information on okay, it. Okay, because I know that so was one of your your specifics. I mean, you did have two specifics that I wrote down. That was one of them. So, so is there I any way to make? I wanted you to un understand there was two accruals that were happening. We made the adjustment and we deducted it from the leave. I just want to. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Is there any way that? He could get that document to satisfy it. that it's been paid back. Here yes, counselor. I mean, um, well, Ms. I hate Bosley. to say paid back because it's not really okay. paid back. It's just it it it's deducted. Just deducted. Okay, it's all right. But it's been okay. it's been adjusted. It's been adjusted. That's that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Yes. Right. Let's see, Miss um, Posile, and then I'll I'll recognize uh, Miss Kinsler. Yes, uh, Miss Kinsler, did you want to be recognized? Yes, please. Thank right. you. Uh, okay. First of all, amount or payback is, is absolutely a wrong word. There's nothing to pay back. What it was was a credit of leave hours for long-term leave taken that we noticed an adjustment needed to be deducted of 100 and something hours. I'm the one that signed off and requested the adjustment. And the adjustment when the pay stubs were released is very obvious. When the pay goes, when the long-term leave hours go down, obviously that means we took it away. Um, it was an error on payroll's part. So I, I absolutely take um, issue with stating that city staff did that on purpose. They didn't, and as soon as it was found out, they deducted it. As far as the reduction in leave, I think that was an honest mistake on payroll's part. I don't think that that is misappropriation anyway. Whatever the mistake was, you know, you are responsible. They report to you. And if you didn't see this and you didn't recognize that you are getting double allotment of major medical leave, then that's on you. Um, second of all, I believe it was more than 100 hours. You said an adjustment of 100 hours for leave taken. That is not what it was. It was double allotment of hours, not leave taken. It, it was being doubled. Ms. Kinsler said it was for one year. So if it's 195 hours and you get 12 days per year, times 10, that's 120 hours. So it's obviously not one year. It was multiple years of double accruals. And my concern is, you know, I caught this in reviewing a document for five seconds. And so what, what else is going on? What else is being, um, it, what other mistakes are there that aren't being caught? That right. people are just, if, if I wouldn't have said anything, Already, Ms. Kensler is getting ready to leave with over $100,000 of taxpayer money as she walks out the door. And I just think it's, it's absurd. So please, everybody, please, there's nothing being hidden. If Mr. Counselor Bradshaw would love to come look at my records, I'll be more than happy to show it to him. Okay, thank nobody, you. Thank nobody's you. doing things wrong. Although staff explained away the excessive leave time scandal, Kelly was the city manager and the chief executive officer. She should have been holding the city accountable. It was her pay stub. She had no excuse for not recognizing and correcting the problem. If she couldn't keep her own finances straight, how could residents trust her with the city funds? Bradshaw also faced backlash when he called for a forensic audit of Kelly's administration. But if recommending a forensic audit is harassment, then Kelly is just as guilty. One of the first things she did when she stormed into Blanco, Texas this summer was recommend a forensic audit. She was also very nasty to the city administrator, who she pushed out. But that's a story for another day. In her EEOC complaint, Kelly stated, I submitted my resignation early 2020, but when COVID hit, I decided to stay to help stabilize the city. Actually, she didn't decide to stay until after the election was canceled. Kelly also omitted that she once again rescinded her resignation on September 15th, 2020, just two weeks before she was set to leave. Why did she do that? Well, at the previous council meeting, the council hired an attorney to investigate Bradshaw. 
Kelly's team was once again going to use a 312 process to remove an elected counselor, even though all four of the other counselors were on borrowed time after they canceled the election. The investigator was for appearances only. The violations were bogus. Bradshaw criticized the police and donated to me, but the votes and outcome were premeditated before the kangaroo court met. The council could then appoint a Kelly supporter to replace Bradshaw. In a shotgun approach, they also brought Bradshaw up on ethics charges. However, in early October, with my assistance, Bradshaw sued to block his removal. The federal district court granted a restraining order to prevent Kelly's team from removing Bradshaw from office. Change Leon Valley campaigned hard during early voting. The campaign signs were everywhere. They placed door hangers on almost every house in town, and they were talking to voters at the polls. Kelly's supporters put up a week showing. The writing was on the wall. On October 26, 2020, during the third week of early voting, Kelly submitted her final resignation letter. Council accepted her resignation on November 2nd, the day before Election Day. But on her way out, they continued to do favors for her. Instead of following her contract and receiving her payout as a lump sum in January, Kelly wanted it to be spread out over the year until it was gone. I don't know why the city administration just can't follow the rules. We want to talk about the rules and law. Why can't for just one time the city administration follow the rules? They're trying to get an underhanded separation agreement here where you get it spread out. That's not what your contract says. And I guess I was sitting back there, what for could it be? It didn't make sense for taxes. Well, I guess it's extra retirement credits through the state if you do it this way. But that's not what the contract says. After going through this before, I think it was February of this year, um, that the city manager had announced that she was going to resign. Um, I think this is our third resignation. So um, I just wanted to yeah, point out also the fact that at that time, the recall had been certified. So we find ourselves at these key points where the city manager decides to, to bail and, uh, and, and resign on the city. But there's been games played, and I'm sure if, uh, if, uh, if an outcome is different tomorrow, that uh, we might find that, that the council has decided to accept her, her rescinding of her resignation again. As the citizens of Leon Valley, we see this game. It doesn't sit well with us, as many other things haven't. And I'm not trying to be mean, but I think it's, it's obvious that the writing's on the wall. And you have decided to make this decision at a key moment like this. My consulting job in Washington, D.C. Um, got put on the back burner for a little while. Uh, but both times that I've resigned, they have been key moments, you're right. They've been before an election because I don't want to resign after election. I want to make it clear to the citizens and this council that this is happening prior to an election. So no matter what happens tomorrow or what, have what would have happened before, if we had actually foreseen there wasn't going to be an election, both times have been prior to the election on purpose in order to try to keep the politics away from it um, in order just to simply give my resignation um, so that it did not appear to be political in any way. So I appreciate that you realize that those were key moments because um, they have been. Her council buddies approved her golden parachute request. Yet Kelly said, the harassment didn't stop though. So when things stabilized, I submitted my resignation and my last day was December 31st, 2021. Nothing was any more stable on October 26th than it was on September 15th. If anything, Kelly and Joe had made things even worse. The new council had very little interaction with Kelly. They didn't revisit her separation agreement. Far from experiencing discrimination, Kelly received sweetheart deals and thousands of dollars of extra pay during her final year at Leon Valley. Even after she left, Kelly was paid extra for holidays. Yes, you heard me right. A former employee was paid thousands of dollars for holidays that occurred while she wasn't employed by the city. Leon Valley keeps trying to one-up itself in the competition for the most outrageous government abuse. What do you think about Kelly's EEOC complaint? Does she have a legitimate claim? While employed, Kelly had plenty of opportunities to file complaints via the processes she established had she actually believed she was being discriminated against at the time. 
but she didn't file any complaints. The timeline demonstrates that she would resign and then rescind her resignations at every change of the political winds. There's a division up here. Um, and I would love to see, and that was one of the reasons for my resignation May 1st. It's before the election. I, I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm apolitical. Whatever happens at the election happens. I want to see a team. She filed the EEOC complaint only after she received every dollar Leon Valley would voluntarily give her. And she might get much more if she sues. Kelly is favored by the Texas Municipal League, which is the city's insurance provider. And Kelly has friends at many of the law firms that TML contracts with. The TML spends taxpayer money on attorneys and payouts. Do you think they have more loyalty to the taxpaying public? Or to the city manager of the year, Kelly? At any rate, it's unlikely that any defense firm will spend as much time as I have to research the truth behind Kelly's corruption. Leon Valley will continue Kelly's legacy of hemorrhaging money to lawyers and lawsuits. Have you seen John Gray's Leon Valley arrest? Be sure to check out this video to see how corrupt government officials censor criticism and retaliate against political opponents.